on behalf of all of the families and friends of First United Methodist Church in Orange, California, Happy Thanksgiving. I'm Pastor Bill Johnson, and this is a holiday edition of We Are The Church. very good Thanksgiving to you, friends. I won't be uh, taking much of your time today, but I do thank you for stopping in and for receiving this greeting of joy and thanksgiving. Today, I'm simply going to read from Psalm 126, the entirety of Psalm 126 in the Hebrew uh, Testament, and it begins this way. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. In scripture, the default position of the people of God is one of thanksgiving and praise. It's a worshipful attitude. We don't always have time in our busy, busy world to uh, stop for a moment and simply give thanks to catch our bearing, to uh, take stock of where we are and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing me this far. When the Hebrew people were crying out to God from the mud pits of Egypt and God sent Moses to Pharaoh to ask Pharaoh to let them go on behalf of God, the first thing that Moses asked of Pharaoh was, let us go out for just a couple of days into the wilderness so we can at least worship our God. And Pharaoh's answer, if you have time for worshiping in the wilderness for a few days, then you're not working hard enough in the mud pits. So I'm gonna double your quota every day and I'm gonna take away the straw so that you can't make the bricks bulkier and lighter. You're gonna to have to work twice as hard now just for asking for the privilege of worship. What a miracle it is in my life that I live in a nation where they've set aside an entire day and not a weekend day, but a weekday. In fact, it becomes a four day weekend just set aside for the principle of Thanksgiving. People who have been through a hard time have no trouble at all setting down their work and giving thanks to God. The original Thanksgiving, as it is told to us in our schools, was occasioned by pilgrims who had come to this land and from uh, abroad and barely eked out uh, uh, an existence in that first winter. And they were in gratitude, able to sit down with the Native Americans who helped them make it through the winter and to have a three-day feast. In uh, the years immediately following the Revolutionary War, George Washington asked for a day of Thanksgiving. Abraham Lincoln de declared another national day of Thanksgiving as a uh, the, this country struggled with its soul over the issues of slavery and, and separation in the South. And, you know, in this, in this past 20th century, uh, a proclamation was established that every time there's a fourth Sunday in November, it will be a national day of Thanksgiving in perpetuity. That's the world I grew up in, a world where our default position in the fall was to give thanks. But Thanksgiving is ever so much sweeter and deeper when we have come through a hard time together, when the Lord restored our fortunes. We, we, our mouths were filled with laughter. Life comes to us in cycles of staggering, towering victories and stunning defeats. But for the people of God who put their faith in the Lord, even the defeats are an occasion for 
gathering in our resources, for taking stock of ourselves, and for learning something so that we go forward in victory again. We go forward in hope. It's a life that we live in which we see the barren field in late winter and early spring, by God's grace, filled with a bountiful harvest in the fall, where we have moments of deep sadness and we cry out our tears to the Lord, and in the night the Lord turns those tears into something that soaks all the way into the heart. And in the morning, we wake with laughter in our mouths. This is the way it is to live in this world. We've come through it these past few years. And today, we are getting ready to sit down with our family, not isolated, but together, and to break bread, to carve the turkey, and to um, come home from the fields, laughing, singing, bringing in the harvest of our labors. So a very happy Thanksgiving to you and to all your family and to wherever you are today. May God bless you richly with his love and grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in your creation you have decreed that so long as there is a world here, seed time and harvest shall not cease. We thank you for those who grow our food, for those who transport it, for those who market it to us. We thank you for those who set policy for our land and see to our economic prosperity. We thank you for those who teach our children, and we thank you for those who proclaim the gospel of Christ in word and deed. We thank you, O oh God, for so many of the blessings of life and for your strength, which reaches out to us in our hardship to carry us through. Give us your peace and joy as we move into a new year with you. In Jesus' name, amen. So the harvest is in. We are uh, established in the Lord. How can it be any better? A very happy Thanksgiving to you and uh, blessings to you and a reminder to do no harm, to do all the good you can, to stay in love with God. Have a great weekend and I'll see you soon.